Welcome back. My guest tonight was communications director for Donald Trump's 2020 presidential campaign, but you may recognize him because he was first on the show in December talking about his yet-to-be-published book, Swing Hard in Case You Hit It, My Escape from Addiction and Shot at Redemption on the Trump Campaign. Well, that book has now been published, and Tim Murtaugh is sharing more about the book and more on The Final Five with me tonight. Welcome back. Good to see you. Good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. How's Happy it to be feel? here. I mean, I know it was a long road, uh, to, you know, obviously to tell the story, to talk about it. Now it's out. Now your story's out there, and you're getting great uh, great reception. Yeah, uh, I am getting great reception, and, and it's uh, really nice to see. And uh, what the reason, and uh, the reason why it's actually really fulfilling to get this reception is because the reaction that I'm getting is really the very purpose that I wrote the book in the first place. Uh, I had a long problem. This this book, first of all, is about my life in politics. About half of it. It's about the 2020 Trump campaign. So if uh, if you like politics, if you like that campaign, if you're a Trump voter, or even if you're not, yeah. you might like that half of the book. The other half of the book is about my decades-long struggle with alcohol. I was a really low-end, desperate alcoholic who had really almost reached the end of the road. And I woke up in jail one day, and four years later, I was flying on Air Force One with <laughs> the President of the United States. And I decided, when I was in rehab, and I went to rehab five times, uh, I spent a lot of time in the bookstore, and I gravitated towards the titles that were written by people who told their own stories and how they made it through, you know, not the, cl the clinical stuff, which is fine, but yeah. I like the real stories. And I decided that if I ever wrote a book, I wanted to write one like that because those are what helped me. And I'm getting feedback from a lot of people who say they've read it and they can see a lot of themselves in the crazy stories that I tell about how I went through the desperate alcoholism. And uh, if, if somebody picks up this book and is having a struggling with alcohol or any kind of addiction, and for the 10 minutes that they're flipping through the book, they don't take a drink in those 10 minutes, <laughs> then it was worth writing, and I've already had people tell me that. So, I mean, I think it's done what I hoped it would do. Well, and addiction is something, as we've talked about, whether it be alcohol, whether it be opioids, I mean, all of this that we've been talking about these days in the media, uh, it is something that affects so many people, no matter your, your socioeconomic background, no matter your political background, it is something that, that affects so many Americans out there. So it, it really doesn't, it shows, your story shows that it doesn't matter what you do, uh, it is something that really does have a profound effect on not just you, but the family and the people around you. Yeah, I, I have found that it's almost universal. I have had so many people tell me that either they themselves have, on my way here, I got a text from someone who, who I don't really know, but is a, a Twitter acquaintance, yeah. who said, you know, I, I'm, I'm still having trouble, I'm still struggling, you mind getting on the phone, <laughs> you know? And I, I don't have all the answers, sure. but I'm a guy who went through it. And I, I would say that this is not a how-to manual. This is not a book that will tell you step-by-step step how to get sober. There are books that do that. Yeah. Alcoholics Anonymous has a fantastic book called, that they call The Big Book. Uh, this is not that. This is just my story. Um, but I think there is use in that. I found use in other people's stories because you can always pull something, you know, like, oh, I was in, exper I was in a situation that was kind of like that, right? So either they themselves, the people I talked to, had a problem with it or someone in their family. It, it, uh, Sadly enough, it, it is actually a fairly universal problem, and everyone knows somebody. Uh, you, you talked about, obviously, this being a lot about politics, and even former President Trump talked a lot about how addiction, alcoholism, affected his family. He says he's never taken a, taken a drink before as a result That's of right. that. As you, as you look at that, and as we look at the 2024 races, that's shaping up here, because I know you've also been, I mean, why wouldn't I ask you about how sure. you see how it's shaping up yeah. right now? Uh, what, as you see this race, it's close, just like the last time around, just like it was in 2016, but what's the difference? What's the different factor here this time around? Well, I believe it is going to be close, because 2016 was close, just three states really made the difference and like 80,000 votes combined in those mm -hmm. three states. 2020 was actually twice as close as 2016, only about 45,000 votes separating in three different, uh, three other states. There's no reason to think that 2024 will not be similar, that it'll be a handful of states and the two candidates will be separated by you know, 10, 15, 20,000 votes in yeah. each of those states. So it's going to be a razor thin election. I do think that voters have the benefit of now being able to see the two presidencies side by side, mm -hmm. because this is a true rematch. And we all, everybody has lived through the Trump presidency. Everybody has lived through the Biden presidency. In my mind, if I'm scoring, I think that gives Donald Trump the clear edge because he was an extremely effective president. And I think that Joe Biden, uh, and I'm, uh, granted, I still support the president. I, st I support President Trump in 2024. Mm -hmm. However, I do think that his presidency is head and shoulders above the Biden presidency. Do you see any changes in Donald Trump as a candidate this time around as opposed to 2020? 
Um, you know, I, I don't know that it's going to be, if anybody's waiting for Donald Trump to enact a new strategy or decide to be, you know, the, this new repackaged Donald Trump, I think they're going to be waiting a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, Donald Trump is who he is. He, I think he's a known quantity. I doubt there are very many people out there in anywhere in this country or, in fact, the world who don't have a, a pretty firm idea of what their opinion of Donald Trump is. I yeah. mean, his, his name, he's got probably the most famous person in the entire world, I would imagine, close to it. I don't know who's much more famous, maybe LeBron James, but I, I don't know. Um, so I'd say his name idea is about 100%, and uh, I, I don't see him changing anytime soon. Right now, it's working for him. He's in the, all the battleground states he's got to lead in. Um, I mean, I've, seven months is a long time, and who knows what's going to happen. If the election were today, I believe he'd win. Uh, something else that happened in D.C. the last couple of weeks, and it sort of inspired, the, the title of your book is inspired, as we mentioned the last time around, by your, by your grandfather, Danny Murtaugh, the, the late great uh, manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, well, the Pirates were in town, and, and they're, they're showing some signs of life, and I'm just curious what your take is on, on our, our shared love of the Pittsburgh Pirates yeah, this season. I got Is this the year? <laughs> well, you know, somebody told me, or I read somewhere, that the ownership of the Pirates thought that they would arrive, really, and be a contender in 2025. Yeah. So maybe they're a year early. I don't know. They got a really, really young ball club. Um, and I think a lot of these guys, kids, I would call them, yeah. um, they don't know what they don't know. You know, and maybe they'll, hopefully they won't find out what they don't know. Right, right, right now they're winning, but they had a great spring last year too. I, that's what then, I keep tempering myself with that. But right. it was good to see them in town. Good to see them doing well, and good to see you doing well, Tim. Thank you. Congratulations again, I man. Great to see you again. It's uh, available on Amazon, Target, Barnes and Noble, anywhere you can buy books online. Swing hard in case you hit it by me, Tim Murtaugh, and I would appreciate it. I appreciate it too. Thank you, Jim. I All appreciate right. your time. Final five is back right after this.